Madam Deputy Speaker, let me carry on. When it comes to stink and pong, the member for Miller is the exceptional proponent of it oh, and the speaker. source of it. When it uh, comes to member for Clayfield, pong, sorry, pause the clock. Member about, for Clayfield, I apologise. I'll ask that you take your seat. The member for Miller is making point of order. I take personal offence to those comments, and they ask uh, they be withdrawn. Order, members. Thank you. On my left. Uh, member, he has I withdraw. Taken it. I withdraw. When it comes to stink and pong, Madam Chairman, the member for Miller is part of a government that excels in emanating. They are the proponents of it, and nothing is more evident than in this piece of legislation where they fail to deal with the biggest stink and the biggest pong of all, and that is their Labor mate Peter Khan, who they appointed to a $300,000 a year job and who this Attorney-General had to sack from that job and give notice to because of allegations in relation to drinking on the job, misappropriation of funds and taking travel overseas at the taxpayer's expense. That's a stink and a pong. And what this bill doesn't deal with is also the issues in relation to the former Deputy Premier of South Brisbane and her actions in the appointment of a former Under-Treasurer of this state and the allegations in relation to her interference in the appointment against the recommendation made by the Director-General of the Department of Premier and Cabinet. That's a stink and a pong. And, Madam Deputy Speaker, in relation to that, it is this government's decision made by the former Premier, the former Attorney-General, the current Attorney-General, factional allies of Premier Miles in this place, to fund Jackie Trad's action against the Triple C to stop the release of a report by the Independent Crime and Corruption Commission into those matters. That is a stink and a pong. That is a stink and a pong, Member for Miller. Not your, not your, not your sort of contrived aggravation in relation to matters that have been fully and totally investigated by ASIC and liquidators. And, and, and that is the essence of what this bill doesn't do, Madam Deputy Speaker, in terms of the Crime and Corruption Amendment Bill. This bill fails to do the things that it should do and which this government knew had to be done. And they knew it had to be done at least a year ago because there's a decision out of the High Court that the government knew was a potential outcome and they failed to prepare for it. And that is the decision in relation to their Labor mate, their Labor appointee, Peter Carr. This bill should have dealt with the fact that the Triple C has been effectively neutered in its reporting function on its corruption investigation since 2020. Prevarication and delay have been the way this government has operated all the way through this shameful episode. And now to have, as the attorney has done, uh, some amendments introduced at the, dying, at the dying death, at the death of this particular debate, shows just how desperate this government is. We've seen that desperation on display. Madam Deputy Speaker, let's not forget who it was that actually introduced the requirements around lobbyists and disclosure of ministers' diaries, because it wasn't the Labor Party. It was the LNP between 2012 and 15 that actually introduced the disclosure requirements in relation to ministers' diaries and in relation to the lobbying activities and the establishment of the lobbyist <laughs> register. And it was the LNP, over the then Labor Party's objections, that introduced the requirement for the leader of the then leader of the opposition to disclose meetings held with lobbyists. That wasn't the Labor Party, that was the LNP. And uh, as uh, the uh, leader of the opposition has foreshadowed in terms of his correspondence uh, with, the, uh, with the Premier regarding this matter, which has been fulsome and complete, including copies of correspondence from the Integrity Commissioner, uh, the LNP uh, will not, uh, in that sense, uh, be uh, uh, opposing the principle in relation to the disclosure of lobbying uh, matters. And in fact, the very reason that the government is moving down that way is because the LNP shadow ministers have been doing so anyway. My own diary discloses all meetings as required since the amendment came in. So, Madam Deputy Speaker, this bill, while necessary, in many respects is long overdue in what it does do, but is more telling about the thought processes of this Labor government in what it fails to do and in the amendments that have been brought forward. And there is only, in fact, one way um, that this matter and integrity can be restored 
to the way this state is government and the only way to restore the openness and transparency Queenslanders deserve is to show Labor the door in 2024 and, and elect a Chrysophilly LMP government.